I'm going to read from the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament from the book of Mark. And today's talk is called The Budding Fig Tree. Uh, all these parables that Jesus taught are about how to get into the kingdom of heaven. In some ways, they're not really about how to have a better life in the body, except that by knowing your goal, which is to get into the kingdom, which is not a place to go to when you die, but it is a place to live in consciously now, can't help but be reflected in your life, in your body, in your physical experience. But that is not the goal. The goal is not about having a better physical experience. The goal is to know who and what you are in truth, to know your source. So, some of this isn't going to sound very nice. I warn you now. Oh, who's just said, oh, good. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm a giver. <laughs> so we start with verse 4, and it says, As Jesus rested outside the temple with some of the apostles, uh, they asked him privately, Master, you speak of an end to these days as we know them. When will this end come? What will the signs be? How shall we know? Jesus smiled, and he said, his response to their concern was peaceful. Oh, okay. Jesus smiled at his brothers. His response to their concern was peaceful and certain. And then he says, let not your fear deceive you. Pay attention to this. Let not your fear deceive you. What this says to me is so many of us are afraid of dying. We cannot live. So many of us are afraid of a... I'll use the term loosely, bad, fu bad future, that we cannot live in joy at this moment. So many of us are afraid that our good is about to be taken away from us or is being taken away from us, that we refuse to live in joy right here and right now. If, you, if that is you, then you know who you are. When you hear of war and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things will seem to happen before this world fades away. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes and famines. All this is but per birth pangs of this world. Love not this world, but do not fear it. For the world will pass away, but you are eternal. You must be on guard and watch the thoughts within your mind. You may see yourselves arrested, or you may see yourself standing as witness unto yourself before governors and kings. This is your choice. He goes on to say that the light of God will shine throughout, and then the end will come. Master, what shall we say when we are brought as witnesses? And he says, do not worry beforehand what you will say. Say whatever is given you at the time and trust it as the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Do not judge what you say, but give it as a gift by accepting it as a gift for you. What other signs will you see? And he says, as long as there is darkness within the mind, you will see brother betray brother and father betray child. Children will rebel against parents, and each one will blame another for his woes. But I say, stand firm in your faith. Trust not the thoughts of death. Listen only to the Holy Spirit, and your thoughts shall be your salvation. He looked at the apostles. He was still and restful in his manner. The world shall be the world until the thought that made it is no more. When the thought is gone, the world shall disappear with it. You will notice nothing but a tiny wisp of air, and then it shall be no more. And you will be glad, for all you will know is peace and freedom and joy. Do not worry that you will not be ready, for before this time you will look out on the world and see the Christ as if it rains upon the earth from clouds held up by angels. You will know this power and glory within you, and the ends of the earth will fade <coughs> into the ends of heaven before your sight. Learn this lesson from the fig tree. 
as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know summer is near. Even so, when your heart is filled with the glory of God and you see the world in this way, you know that heaven is near, right at the door, waiting you. I tell you the truth, you have nothing to fear. All that is not of God will pass away, but what is God will last forever, even from this day into eternity. And they asked, when will this happen? <laughs> because we like to put it on our calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus laughed. He said, there is no day or hour to which you can look. There is only now. Accept that all I say is true. Keep watching your mind even unto this moment. Now is the time for salvation, for there is no other time but now. Do not fall asleep and let this time pass you by. What I say to you, I say to everyone, stay alert and keep watch in joyfulness. Well, he said Jesus was smiling, so the apostles listening to him could not be afraid. So, what we learn from this is nothing is going to stay the same. Nothing in the world is going to stay the same. And we are fighting to keep it the same, even though it's not serving us to keep it the same. But it is horrifying, the thoughts, that so much could change, like everything. And yet it's been happening since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of the creation of this earth, this earth has shifted and moved and people's moods with it. And yet we keep saying it shouldn't be happening. It can't, ha I will not let it happen. And then it happens. And, and as long as I resist, as he says, people are fighting with each other. But it's not just the fighting with, amongst us, and that's pretty rough, how we fight amongst us every day in teeny tiny ways or colossal ways. We fight amongst us. The weather changes. An iceberg moves. A glacier moves. Everything keeps changing. There are earthquakes and there are floods. And we're still saying, but it should not change. <coughs> and so we live in terror and obstinance, quite frankly, thinking I'm the boss over the physical when I need to become boss over the spiritual. Let me become the leader of my life in the spiritual. Come to terms with the fact that it is the love of God that you desire more than, more than you desire the world, more than you desire physical pleasure or comfort. Some, I always find people who wanna argue these things. Fortunately, we don't have that kind of thing here right now, but this week I'll get a call. But Sean, what about but Sean, what about, am I not supposed to want anything? Should I just give up now? Should I just kill myself? Should I just, what am I supposed to do? Just sit and do nothing? And of course not. You're supposed to enter the present moment. Knowing you may never achieve a single goal in the physical world. If you're planning, I'll use this example. If you're planning a show, let us know you may never actually get to the show, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't rehearse. <coughs> but you must take joy in the rehearsal. <coughs> you must take joy in the process. You must take joy in learning and creating. And then, if you get to the show, terrific. But if you do not take joy... Now, in the creating, in the rehearsing, in the learning, in the practice, in the experimenting, that you're just in hell, right here and right now. And you lose out on all that I believe life has to offer. And believe me, I forget frequently. It's not like sitting on a lofty place here and, I, I, and I'm always a joy. No. I forget. 
Well, I had the tooth thing for six weeks, and I didn't know it was a tooth thing. And I thought I, I had a nerve disorder, and I did not know when the pain was going to subside. I absolutely did not know when, because I didn't know the cause, and x-rays weren't telling us. And some of my joy disappeared. I did, I did, when I did my Palm Springs show, I, I had a hard time mustering up the joy that I get when I walk on a stage. I, I, I knew I had to go through the motions, I had to say my lines, I had to, but I knew there was an, a key element missing and I, and I could not find it, but it did not stop me from showing up as best I could. And I showed up pretty, a lot without complaining, I showed up plenty with complaining. <laughs> But I also knew this will pass, and I don't know what day. I do not know if it will pass with a thought, with an, well, they're all experiences, aren't they? You know, I just didn't know, but I believe that it is possible. And then I had the idea, go to your regular dentist, because I'd gone <laughs> to a different dentist who did extras. And as soon as I got back from my travels, and I was, that was the part I was traveling a lot, and I still got all my work done while I needed to do that. And I got back and went to the dentist. He said, oh, let me send you over to a specialist because our x-rays here can't show it. And it turned out it was a cracked tooth, number 31. And they took it out that day. Five shots of Novocaine later. Five shots of Novocaine. And $2,100 later, they took the tooth out. He took the tooth out. It took a second to take that tooth out. I was shocked. He said, do you want to see it? I said, it's out. There was no, nobody put a foot up against my chest. Out. There was none of that. He just, uh, want to see it? And there it was in the, in the clamps. Now, I could go off on a tent, $2,100. As David says, that's like building a retaining wall. Who wants to do such things? It's like paying the electric bill. Nobody wants to have to pay an electric bill. What do you see for it? What, really, uh, you know, shouldn't electricity just be? You know, certain things, shouldn't they just be? It's not like a new mirror. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> not like a new outfit. It's a... Uh, <laughs> and so... When Jesus uses the example about the budding fig tree, that when you see a budding fig tree, you know summer is near, relief in weather is near, uh, planting and life is showing itself to us. And it's the same when we get on board with our spiritual life, that we start to know the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven in my mind. To me, the kingdom of heaven is knowing the truth, despite all appearances. If it were to snow in July, you know it's still summer. You know this will pass. If it snows now at the beginning of May, you may not know it's ever going to pass. But as we get another month into this, if it should snow, you're going to believe it's going to pass, so you know, you believe. Look for signs of the kingdom in your thoughts, in your experiences, in what you witness. Look for buds coming up in your life experiences, in your thinking. Look and notice when you are willing to experience life differently than you did before when something that would normally upset you doesn't. Something that would normally just throw you into a tailspin, and it doesn't. I've had many of those occasions over the years where normally I'd be so upset, and it's like, hmm, this doesn't bother me. And it started when I started meditating. I found that six, I often my meditations, nothing would take place, I wouldn't get any great ideas. But six hours later, I'd be calm where normally I'd be upset at something. And over the years, seeing certain things like that, and there are other times I just maintain the upset, and I don't worry about it, I know that's going to pass too. But over the years, my confidence expanded to try new things, to find out it would not be devastating if I didn't reach my goal. If I weren't the most amazing at something. If I fell and got embarrassed, it would not be the worst thing because you see 
I could still give thanks that I was even willing to try. There are some of you guys that are so well, I say exercised. Your muscles are so exercised and you understand things of how to do things in the world that I don't even care to learn that it would not occur to me to sit down and learn. Some of you understand money in a way I will never understand money, but I also understand prosperity in a way, and they're not the same thing. I, I understand certain things of spirit because that was, to me, the solution for my way of thinking. When somebody gets up at the retreat, and sings with David Friedman in the afternoon from our afternoon musical thought exchange sessions who say, I was told not even to sing happy birthday. That was so awful. And then they get up and they sing happy birthday on pitch at full volume. And it's beautiful. And it's like the empowerment. What B Betsy memorized and then sang three songs. Was she had you ever sung an entire song by yourself before? Never. There we go. <laughs> yeah, and, and she opened the show. <laughs> I mean, that that is really something. Kat, what Kathy Kathy took risks that I gave her a direction last night to put her personality out there in ways that she had been rather afraid to do before, and it was bold. And, but she did, she found a solution to do something I wanted. She said, well, could I do it this way? Absolutely. Joe Jones puts together a set. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Jones rewrites whole songs. <laughs> Sometimes intentionally. <laughs> but she finds the look and the costumes and everything. Kevin, who was going to quit how many times, stuck with it. You stuck with it, Kevin, and you got laughs last night. And Paul, how beautiful you were last night. And uh, that you got up there a year ago, could you have done that? And, and, and that's what we do together here above the Ford dealership. We take risks together. We do. Well, correct perception. Every time somebody raises their hand in front of a whole room of people and says, I've got an issue going on here. And I, because I, and I want to see it differently. I want to see it in love. I want to see it in light rather than criticism. I want to see it this way rather than in guilt. I want to see what's actually going on here instead of what I think is going on here. And that takes us closer to the kingdom. Every time somebody, when they come in here and they hear what I'm saying and they could let go of their competitive nature. They are closer to the kingdom. Every time somebody leaves here and they get in their car and they can put aside the thought that somebody is trying to beat them down the highway, that somebody is trying to get one over on them on the road. Every time you do, you're closer to the kingdom. And when you get closer, we all get closer. And when I get closer, we all get closer. What one does is good for all. And so, last night there were five performers. Not one was competing to be the best. There are not going to be awards. They're not going to be the Let Me Entertain You Awards. Because <laughs> everybody wins. D David's nominations this week, it would be lovely if he wins them all. And we would love that. But I got to tell you, just being nominated, while, yes, maybe it feels good, people are answering his phone calls. That's what that has done for him. People are writing back and saying, we want to look at your other shows. That's what this is doing for him. It's, it's taking him out of the invisibility. And some of us can get out of invisibility and say, oh, no. This is too much. This hurts. I'm uncomfortable. I'm this. I'm that. And they will say, pull the pull the shade down. Say, oh no, I don't want to be seen. It's too, it's too too frightening. It's too this. It's too that. But others say, oh, this feels good. Oh, I'm so glad I tried this on and it fits. Uh, and so, in the budding fig tree, 
Notice the buds. Notice the tiny green leaves of your life. As Kevin's saying, could be, who knows. Something's coming, something good. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have good here now. What I invite you to be fully, consciously aware of is if you can feel that something good is coming, that means you currently have something good. You couldn't know about a future good if you didn't have a present good. Are we clear on this? Are you willing to agree with me on this? It will help you a lot if you do. I can't know about a future good if I don't know that I have a present good. And so, if you think you know you have a future good, look around. This is your present good. It may look different than you had planned on it looking. But this is your good. Give thanks for it now. This is your good. Give thanks for it now. And then look forward to what we call the future. But the future is now. And it's 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 now. Somewhere... My good is waiting for me to accept it now. Thank you.